from Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story is from a place called Bayville, New York. I uh, lived for several years near Bayville, New York, and my brother, and his wife, still live in that area, not in Bayville, but they live in that part of Long Island. And um, so when I read you this story, I'm very, very well aware what kind of neighborhood we are talking about here. Here's the story. A Long Island couple that's how they say it there, Long Island. A Long Island couple could go to jail after they were ordered to keep their young daughters quiet. William and Rachel Pokchacek by a vowel. who live in the village of Bayville, were hit with a notice of violation after neighbors complained about the couple's daughters aged 5 and 11, who they said played too loudly around the family's backyard pool. The couple is due in court to face the charge of violating a noise code usually reserved for, quote, the shouting and crying of peddlers, hawkers, and vendors, which disturbs the peace and quiet of the neighborhood. The penalty of convicted, according to the village code, a $250 fine, 15 days in jail, or both. For each day the offense continued. No one is going to get 15 days in jail because their daughters were around the swimming pool, shrieking. It's not going to happen. Rachel Pakshatek, 43, said she didn't know how to solve the problem. She said, should I muzzle my children? <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor Mark Kostakis, whose wife Angie is listed as one of the complainants on the summons, said he began making audio recordings of the children to document the noise. We should call him and get him to play that tape. Just have him play it over the phone. I want to hear this. He... <laughs> He began making audio recordings of the children to document the noise. He said he spent three years complaining to the village and the Pakshatex. This is it for me, he said. I don't work 12 hours a day to come home and listen to this. Rachel Pakshatex said her children should be allowed to play outside during the day, though she does tell them to be quiet. The notice ordering the Pakshatek's children quiet described them as screaming and shouting and causing, quote, an unreasonable nuisance. I think my answer to this is going to surprise you. 
because I have complained about going to the movies and having your screaming baby there when I'm trying to watch an R-rated film. I have complained about you bringing your loud little crumb crunchers to expensive restaurants when I'm trying to have a quiet candlelit dinner and there are these banshees running up and down the aisles of the restaurant. And speaking of Long Island, we even had a, a fellow named uh, Luigi Q, Luigi Quarto, who owns Luigi Q's restaurant. Was that in Plainview? I think it was Plainview, Long Island. And um, he was uh, getting crap from uh, a local TV station because he wouldn't allow children into his restaurant. It was adults only. And even though it was legal, he was getting crap. And you've heard my opinion about all of these things. Yes, I believe you should be able to have a restaurant where it's just adults. Yes, I believe you should be able to have movie theater where there's no screaming babies. You should be able to say no children, especially at an R-rated movie. And, uh, of course, I have said, I think that if you're in first class paying $6,000 on an airplane, I think that... Uh, Screaming children should not uh, be in your ear. It should be legal for the uh, airline to say, you know what, this is not a, a children's flight. You'll have to be on a flight with other parents, uh, not with people who uh, d don't want to be there, uh, with screaming children. But let's talk about this part of the world where we're talking about Bayville, New York, not unlike the place my uh, my brother and his wife live. They have a son, my nephew, who is just spectacular. But um, these neighborhoods where middle class and lower middle class people live, and they buy their tract homes for, you know, $185,000 or whatever, and everybody's got a front lawn, everybody's got a basketball net outside the, the home. People have garages. Nobody parks their car in the garage because the garage becomes the storage area. Believe me, I know these neighborhoods. I grew up in a house like this for seven years. I lived in a house like this in a neighborhood just like the one we're talking about here on Long Island. These are neighborhoods where some people have pools. Those who don't are the people who can't afford them yet. Some people have fences around their backyard. Most everybody has a barbecue grill, and they, they grill on the weekend. These are people who have their friends over from work. It's like the TV show King of Queens. It's a bunch of people like that who uh, get together with their family and friends, and they live in the suburbs because they want to raise their kids. I'll put it this way. I'm just going to be frank about this, okay? These are frequently people who do not, quote-unquote, celebrate diversity. So they move to the suburbs to get their kids away from the diversity and into public schools where there, uh, there isn't a lot of diversity. That's the most polite way I can put this. Roads like this. These are neighborhoods that are geared to and designed for families of parents and children. And these are neighborhoods where people want to raise children. Just as I believe there should be places where we can be free of kids. Certain apartment buildings, for example, condominium complexes, gated communities, R-rated movies, adult restaurants, certain airline flights, especially with first and business class. Just as I believe that uh, we should have that. I do believe there should be neighborhoods where having kids is not only encouraged, but that's pretty much the way it is. That, that's what these families are, are here to do. That's what these neighborhoods are for. You know, as an unmarried guy, I wouldn't want to live in a neighborhood like this. I went and visited my brother not long ago. By the way, my brother lives in a great house. His wife keeps a great home. And my nephew is uh, rambunctious. He can be very noisy. He's a comedian at six and a half years old, uh, very much like I was when I was six and a half years old. He's got a dog that he uh, chases around the backyard and grabs him and hugs him and screams and the dog whines and 
Uh, Mom is yelling at the son, uh, my nephew, to uh, pick up his toys or to uh, come in for dinner or whatever. These are the sounds of a neighborhood like that. That's what it is. I love to visit, but I wouldn't want to live in a place like that. Now, I am not seeing in this story that the two neighbors who filed the complaint are childless, but I'm guessing they are. And my question to them would be this. If you're childless, why are you living in a place like this? You know, if you don't like the sound of children screaming, this is not the neighborhood for you. It's not. There are places you could be living where it's pretty much child-free. I gave you an example. I'm not suggesting you spend the kind of money I've spent. My neighborhood has no children. It's all about adults. Halloween, October 31st, you don't bother going out to Smart and Final and picking up a uh, giant hefty bag full of uh, Hershey bars or anything waiting for the kids to come. Nobody's coming. Ten years I've been living in the same house Nobody on Halloween, not one person in 10 years has shown up. I live in a community of adults. Because I don't want to be around screaming children. You know, when I want to see my nephew, I will fly to New York, drive to Long Island, move into my uh, the guest room they've set up for me at my brother's house. And uh, I will enjoy a weekend of grilling on the barbecue and playing with my nephew, and they'll be screeching and screaming and dog barking, and, and that's what it's all about. That's the kind of neighborhood it is. My brother and his wife live in this neighborhood because they wanted to raise their kid in this kind of environment, this kind of leave it to beaver, Pleasantville environment that my parents tried to have for us. As a kid, I didn't like it at all. There were four kids in my household. I was the oldest of four. Um, I was tired of the constant noise that was going on in there, constant screaming, constant running around, constant complaining. He's yelling at me. He teased me. He took my thing. Uh, at 16, I couldn't take it anymore. I left home. I understand the people who filed the complaint. But what I don't understand is why they live in a place like this. Here in Southern California, we've got neighborhoods like this all over. Probably got more of them than New York has. All these communities in Orange County, all these communities in, uh, you know, Ventura, Oxnard, West Valley, Calabasas, Woodland Hills. I mean, the list goes on. All these places. Westlake Village. Yeah, I mean, I can, off the top of my head, you can name a whole bunch of them. Go to the east, you got Eagle Rock, you got all that whole area along the 605, you know, Irwindale, Baldwin Park. <laughs> That's what this is all about. People want to live in these tract homes and neighborhoods where other people have children. They want to be in an environment with a good school district. They want to be in an environment where people aren't going to complain that their kids are screaming. Now, granted, take your kids to a restaurant where I'm paying $300 to dinner, I'm going to complain. And I think I have a right to complain. But why in the world would somebody who doesn't have kids move into a neighborhood like this and then start complaining about the noise? It doesn't make any sense to me. Am I wrong about this? Tom Likas. Really? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. Screw this other stuff. Just talk about sex. Oral sex. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rich in Phoenix, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not Big much, fan. Rich. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I totally agree. I think that, like, you know, kids have to be kids, and if you want to live in that kind of neighborhood, I mean, that's what you got to expect. But... I don't know, Bayville, it doesn't really surprise me. I, I, uh, I'm from Long Island too, and, uh, I worked in Bayville actually cleaning swimming pools, so I wouldn't, maybe I clean their pool, but, uh, 
I don't know. Most people there seem uh, a little uptight and pretty ritzy, like jerks. Well, <laughs> ba- Bayville, that. Bayville is hardly the Hamptons. Well, yeah, it's not like uh, Roslyn or anything, but uh, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty uh, exclusive, if you ask me. A lot of maids and. <laughs> that kind of deal going on. I thought you were thinking of maybe Bayport. <laughs> That's what I was. Thinking. No, no, no. I know where Bayville is. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, uh, it doesn't. I think it's a little. It doesn't really surprise me. I mean, I worked there and I, I dealt with some of the people. Wouldn't there, surprise think, me if it was Quag or West Hampton <laughs> Beach, but uh, this is yeah. kind of surprising. Uh, I don't know. I think that the people there. I've, I, I've dealt with them, and I think most of them are kind of. I don't know, can I say asses on the radio? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yes, well, you can. Well, thank you for that, Rich. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Craig in Tempe, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hey, uh, how are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, I'm just calling in. Uh, I want to make a comment on the, on the topic you're talking about uh, going out to dinner and movies and people bringing screaming children and babies. Uh, I'm down here in Tempe, and I've every so often on Friday nights after work, I go to a movie down at the Arizona Mills, and I don't know what's going on, there, but the last three weeks, or the last three times I've been going to a movie, I keep seeing people bringing babies. And last weekend, it was really bad. The, I was tra- watching Ocean's 13, and right up in the front, right up by the screen, I hear a kid start screaming. I'm like, oh, why would you bring a kid to a show this late, sit up front? Nah, forget that. Ocean's 13 is not a kid's movie. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll try and get over it. The, the dad picked up the baby and started walking out. I'm like, okay, he's taking the kid out. Except he didn't take the kid all the way out. He stood in the aisle uh, without going all the way out. So for the next 10 minutes of the movie, the rest of us in the theater are listening to this kid cry over in the aisle while trying to watch the movie. Did anyone complain to the manager? Um, I didn't. I was. I didn't feel like getting up to walk out of the movie. I don't know if anybody else did, but um, I like the. I was not ready to myself. But then he finally just carried the kid out about after five ten minutes. Did anyone uh, yell at uh, the parent? Um, I don't know. They like I said, they were sitting all the way up in the front. Um, I didn't hear if anybody was yelling at them, but I know that. I, I think it's time. Ta- I think it's time for people to start yelling at people like that. Yeah. I mean, I was looking around, and the people sitting around me were all shaking their heads, and it was just ridiculous. Thank you for that, Craig. Appreciate the call from Tempe. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Edward in Phoenix on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Edward. I started listening to you on Monday, and first time I've been able to call in. So on this topic, I used to work nights, and uh, I had a neighbor... I had a couple of kids that, I mean, they were holy tears. They were the worst kids I've ever seen. And uh, I went over to the parents, and I was like, hey, can you keep your kids quiet a little bit? Because, you know, I work at night. And after about a week or two, three weeks of tops, you know, the kids started calming down. Everything started being cool. So I don't think people got to call the cops and file a report and everything. Because I got four nephews, and kids are going to be kids. If you don't want to live in that neighborhood, move. Well, that's the thing. I, I, I think some neighborhoods are really made for children, for people who want to raise children. And, 90% of them are. Well, I don't know about 90% of them, but I certainly think there are some. Well, there's not very many housing districts like your own that just want adults. It's either it's a family housing district or an old person's housing district. It's not really too much of just adults that just want to be adults, no kids around. Well, uh, there there are some. Um, I know that mine is like that, and I do think there are places like that. Frankly, there are very few single people uh, who own houses. Most of them own apartments, condos, or they just rent apartments. But uh, really, um, I would say if you don't like the sound of screaming children, you should be moving to a tract home in the suburbs. That is the truth. If you don't want to listen to kids, I mean, worst case scenario, you move to the country. Then you ain't going to listen to nothing. You know, I, I don't want kids at expensive restaurants. I don't want kids at R-rated movies. I don't want kids in first class uh, on an airliner uh, without having the option of flying adults only. 
But I do think that, you know, kids have to live somewhere, and I think the suburbs in a tract home is the perfect place for them to be, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Josh on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom! Hello, Josh. What's shaking, brother? Ah, uh, but I don't know, not much, not yet. <laughs> Maybe after the show I'll be shaking something. <laughs> Hey, I completely agree with you. I have twin boys, and I love these guys more than anything in the world. But they don't go to Ruth Chris. They don't go to Maestro's. They don't go to Salt Cellar. And I have actually gotten up and left with my wife from one of these restaurants because there were children in these places that were being obnoxious. I'm not dropping $300 to listen to a bunch of kids scream next to me. I'm going to go to Chuck E. Cheese with that with my kids. Which makes perfect sense. Yeah, you should go to Chuck E. Cheese. You should go to McDonald's. I think Red Lobster is a good place to go. Outback is a good place to go. I completely agree. And 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 for someone to take away from our time, you know, whether it's with my wife or a business associate or something like that, where we're actually trying to enjoy ourselves and have a little bit of peace and quiet and some good wine, I to have some kid screaming next to me is absolutely. Out of control. I think, but places like Outback are a great place to bring children and have, them, have them learn what it's like to be in a restaurant, how to behave in a restaurant. Um, I would, if I happen to go to Outback, like, uh, my brother, my brother's not in my income bracket. My brother goes to Outback on a regular basis, and he takes his wife, and sometimes he takes his son, and sometimes he doesn't. I if my, if I found myself at the Outback Steakhouse with my brother, I would not the le- be the least bit offended. No, not if, there, at all. if there if were you're children there, because that's you're, that's what it's all about. Well, yeah, and you're leaving there with a you know you can go there with a, with your wife and two kids and leave there with you know with a sixty dollar tab. You know you go sit down and you're right. you're picking out a seventy dollar steak, and when by the time you leave, you're your 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 uh, tip is more than what it costs to eat at one of those restaurants. No doubt about it. But more than That's that, what me. I like the idea of of the Red Lobsters and the Olive Gardens uh, and the Sizzlers and and the Outbacks as places where families can go so kids can learn how to behave in a restaurant. I, I think completely it's, agree. I think it's fantastic. But what I don't like is when these parents say, you know what? <laughs> we want to go to the Palm. We want to go to the Ivy. We want to go to Mastro's. We want to go. And they bring the kids to adult restaurants where people are trying to have an adult time, drinking adult beverages, dancing right. on the dance floor, uh, picking each other up at the bar, whatever. Uh, or people are just trying to have an adult conversation over some candlelight. Uh, I think it's rude to bring your children into that place. They don't know how to behave. They don't appreciate what they're getting anyway. And I don't, I don't understand. But, but you see, the thing is, I'm fair about this. I do believe that there are certain neighborhoods where people should uh, accept the idea there's going to be children. And if you don't like it, get out. And I think suburban neighborhoods where there are tract homes and basketball uh, hoops in the driveway, that's a kid's neighborhood. And I would agree. At least from Phoenix, you need to move to Sun City West, and there's a lot of places you can go where there's no kids at all, and you don't have to worry about hearing any of them. Right. <laughs> well, that's all, Tom. I was wondering if you could take me out African tribal style with a gangster after it. Of course I can. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Yes. Well, That's our telephone number. Jesse in Scottsdale, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? I completely agree with you. I myself have a 10-month son, and when my husband and I want to my restaurant, we bring our nanny over. We don't take him and risk, you know, him being uncomfortable or, you know, wanting to leave and disrupting everybody else. That would be completely inconsiderate of me. And how wonderful would the world be if more people thought like that who had children? It's like, okay, so just because you're used to them screaming and crying doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be. I think we, but here's the thing. I, you know, we're so used to this idea that it's a free country and you should be able to do anything you want to do. Uh, I think it would be much more productive if we start accepting the idea 
that people should live in places that fit their lifestyles and they should uh, socialize in places that fit their lifestyles and try to be more considerate of the people who, who are trying to do that while you are trying to say, hey, I can go anywhere I want to. You know, and you can go anywhere you want to. However, there has to be some limitations, you know, as far as a get a sitter, get a nanny. You know, um, my husband and I, we live in Greyhawk, which is a very nice upscale community. And there's tons of kids that ride around. However, they all seem to be very respectful. Like, they don't scream. They don't yell. You know, it's like, so their parents are doing a great job in raising them. However, you go to some communities, and there's kids, you know, riding their bikes at midnight, and, you know, breaking into cars. It's like, Jesus, what are, these, what are the parents doing? You know, how are they truly bringing up their children? That's Good what question. scares me. That's what scares me the most. So, yeah, parents who have loud and noisy kids, leave them at home. Right. Please. But they should have a home in a neighborhood with those other noisy kids. Uh, Absolutely. Where, where it's families, <laughs> and they're all in the same neighborhood, and the kids have other kids to play with. And there should be a community counselor that would take care of, you know. Well, by the way, by the way, I told you I live in a neighborhood where there's where there's no kids at all. There uh, are people who attempted to move into our neighborhood with kids. And, of course, you know, you had the usual gay neighbor going, oh, God, the breeders are here. <laughs> there goes the neighborhood. Uh, but uh, these people, uh, you know, came by, and they were the people with the baby and the papoose, and you had the uh, the people with the uh, children who attempted to go trick-or-treating, and then they tried walking uphill in the Hollywood Hills at a 60-degree angle <laughs> and got winded. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand why people came to our neighborhood with children. It's just not made for children. My house is a four-story house with stairs. And people come over, they bring kids, like, oh, my God, what if my kid falls down the stairs? I said, bingo. Bring a baby gate. <laughs> what are you doing? Either bring a baby gate or don't come. Yeah, that's, this is not a child-friendly house. Get used to it. Look where I live. Come on. Absolutely. But yeah, when, I visit, I, I, when I visit my brother, I don't go there going, how do you stand all these children around here? <laughs> that's where he should live with his son. That's where they should be. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. All right, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Have a great evening, buddy. All right. You too. Appreciate the call. Tom. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Why can't you be specific about what you want in bed? Why can't you be specific about what you want as gifts or when you expect something romantic? Why can't you tell us? You see that around you, this zone? Start sucking. The Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 tom We're talking about the parents who may end up going to jail. Jail? Because the little girls couldn't stop screaming around the pool. <laughs> what do you think about that? Tanya on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. So, just wanted to weigh in on this, and, you know, I, I feel for the parents and the little girl who had a total meltdown, and they had to go to jail for it, but speaking as a parent, I have three of my own. My youngest is 19 months, and um, since he's been born, there's been three nights where he's woken up at the god-awful times, you know, the 12.30s, the 2 o'clock, the 3.30s, you know, having his own kind of meltdown. And each time this happened, it was maybe about 15 minutes each episode. But, you know, this is happening, and, of course, we're getting jolted out of sleep as well, as well as, you know, my other two. And, you know, and then we have this one particular neighbor, because it's a, it's a kind of a mixed neighborhood. You've got a lot of singles, you know, 20 something you got some 30 somethings that might have one or two kids. And, but there's this one neighbor, I don't know who he is. I know what apartment he lives in, though. But, you know, he's yelling something out his window, and I'm thinking, dude, we are not having fun here. We also got woken up. We are trying gas drops. We're trying to walk him. We're trying to soothe him. We're trying sippy cups. We're trying clean diapers here. We're not sitting here giggling to ourselves because the baby woke up at 1230 and he's crying his head off. We're not having fun. We're stressing. We're thinking about our neighbors as well, and I'm, I'm a stress case when it comes to that because I, you know, I, I try to be considerate of, of people around me and such. And, you know, I just I don't know what they're thinking. It's like you screaming out the window, I know my kid is crying. I know. I know this. I can hear him. He's in my face. I don't need you hollering out your window like I don't know what's going on. 
You know, so, I mean, just on behalf of the parents who are out there who, you know, might be in a situation where their kid is having a meltdown and stuff, and they're trying to do the best they can, like one of your callers said previous, you know, kids will be kids. We all had a meltdown moment, a few of them, in our times when we were smaller, and no amount of of holding and hugging and kissing and patting and walking around and sippy cups or bottles made it go away. It's I, I do think, that think though, that in our society, I do think we have to start thinking about maybe mm-hmm. uh, we need neighborhoods that reflect our lifestyles. In other words, and I totally agree with that. I, am not, I will not move into a place where, you know, like some place in Redondo Beach on the water where it's all, you know, Manhattan. Yeah, Beach, like, like you know, here, Jake, let me, give, let me give an example Manhattan. everybody can relate to. Melrose Place. Can you imagine moving into Melrose Place with a couple oh, of kids? No. <laughs> why, why would I do that? I mean, I people you know, do it, and that's and that's sad. And then if somebody's going to yell out the window, then okay, okay, fine. But you know, and just like you know, the taking them to the movies and all that stuff, like your other caller said, you know, get a damn babysitter. You know, pay them ten bucks and you know an hour when me and my husband want to go out and have time for us. We don't haul the kids. We don't, and when we do go to very nice restaurants, we don't want to sit there because we try to get away from the kids for a little while, have some us time. We don't want to go somewhere, spend a few hundred dollars on dinner, just so we can hear something that we can hear at home for free. Um, and so, so, so you understand from both angles. Absolutely, because you know, I was young once. I know how it is. I do, but now, you know, as a mom and stuff like that, and you know, I'm trying to raise my kids the best way I can and stuff. But you know, when they have these meltdowns in places, public places, at home, in the privacy of their own room, and they're crying for God knows what reason. You know, just letting your your single light out there know the parents are not having a good time. Right. You know, we're freaking out. We're trying to we're trying to get back to sleep. We have jobs too. We're trying to calm these kids down and stuff. But you know, it happens every once in a while. You know, just you know, give us a break every once in a while. You know, I could see if it was a nightly occurrence, but you know, three times in a nineteen month period, I don't think it's too bad. And it wasn't an hours long marathon. Well, it all like depends. That. Again, if you were living in Melrose Place, they'd be upset. I'll tell you what. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I would expect to have, you know, scary things on my doorstep and whatnot. You know, but it's it's definitely, that's not the case here. I mean, there's, you know, lots of uh, elementary school children here, and he, my baby's not the only one on the block. There's one more because sometimes I hear him crying from clear across the street. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So just to let, you know, people out there know, if it's 1230, just be glad you're not the one having to deal with the baby at 1230, rocking them and giving them a bottle and changing diapers because the people that are having to, having that baby in their arms and trying to deal with it right there in the moment, it is not fun. It's not a good time. <laughs> I understand. Tanya, thank you. It's Gretchen. Gretchen's in Surprise, Arizona, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Well, hello. In fact, I'm going to pull over and talk to you so I don't lose a signal because I'm so out, so far out in the sticks. Hold on. All right. Um, well, first of all, I'm a flight attendant. And I'm a mother of three, so I understand two parts of this that you're talking about. So I thought I would chime in. Um, first of all, I don't understand. I don't understand why people have to have their children crying on the plane all the time. Because I took my children with me, and even when they were babies, you know, you stick a bottle in their mouth and they shut up. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. I would never kick somebody off of a plane for it. I, I've heard other people do it, and they got into huge trouble with it. One of the other airlines did. Um, so I think it's more irritating to have dogs on a plane because they're so loud they keep barking. Um, but the kids in the restaurant thing, um, my husband and I just got back from San Francisco today. We had a great dinner out on the wharf, nice restaurant. We took our two older children with us. Of course, the youngest one is at home with Grandma, but we took the two older ones. I get compliments on my children all the time for being so well-mannered, they're so nice, blah, blah, blah. I don't understand why, if your child is being a little hellion, why you don't take it outside and set them straight. There are so many parents out there that they do have good children. and Or take them to the Red Lobster, for God's or, sake. Yes. I do. I mean, you can take your children out to a nice restaurant if you keep them well-behaved. There are well-behaved children out there, and I don't understand. I think it's the parents. I don't think it's the children. I think it's the parents that can't deal with their with their own children. That's my issue. Because, no, go ahead. 
Uh, well, my husband and I can go out for a nice dinner without the children, but we can go we can go out for dinner with our children, even at a nice restaurant, and keep them well mannered. I don't understand why other parents can't do this. Well, uh, they, and by the way, they they don't do it not only at restaurants; they don't do it anywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. People's kids run run amok all the time, and and there's very few parents who do what you do. Uh, I mean, I can't tell. I I was at a restaurant one time in Chicago. Chicago, okay, nice restaurant. Nice. And there's a kid walking from table to table, licking every salt shaker. That's disgusting. Like taking the salt shaker off each person's table, licking it, and putting it back. And and the parents, and, and the parents are just sitting there, like, <laughs> like watching this. Like, see, and that's just that's just disgusting to me. This this is what needs to change. It's not the children. Children are children. The thing is, the parents taking care of the children. I mean, if you've got a two year old, obviously, and they're throwing a tantrum, there's not much you can do about it. Oh except take them out of the situation so it doesn't spoil everybody else's night. That's the parent taking care of the child. And, you know, that's your child that's having the tantrum to begin with. But I've got children, they don't do that anymore. They know that I will remove them from the situation so that it doesn't spoil everybody else's evening. I don't see why people don't do that. And I think you're right. I think we should start telling people, because obviously if they haven't figured it out, they need to be told. I think you're right about that, Gretchen. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. John's at Gilbert, Arizona on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. John, How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Good, good. No, I want to actually, I agree with uh, Gretchen. Um, man, we have a two-year-old and I have an eight-year-old, and we know better to take them, you know, to, to real fancy restaurants. And we also know that when we are at even places like the, you know, like you said, the Olive Garden or the Red Lobster or wherever it is, do take them outside. I mean, yeah, my two-year-old acts up. We, we don't even, that's the problem, I think, is that too many people want to pretend like their kids are perfect, okay? A two-year-old is not perfect, all right? Throwing fits, throwing stuff across the restaurant, whatever it is, take them outside. Whether it be a timeout, we don't believe in physical punishment. That's great. Take them outside, though. Like she said, remove them from the situation. And, and frankly, don't bring them into the situation. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, like I said, we know better than to take them, you know, to a, you know, say a two hundred dollar, you know, dinner. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not going to ruin everybody else's time because, you know, why? Because we had to go and, you know, eat dinner or, or whatever. We were selfish enough to, to not find a babysitter or whatever the case may be. So a lot of people out there like that, John. It's unfortunate. I got to tell you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing? Great. And yes, I do care. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, i got to tell you, I've got three boys, and they're, my youngest now is 12. I've been out to restaurants with them. I've been to nice places with them. I've been to average places. Bottom line, if you don't take care of your kids and let them run amok, you're going to irritate everybody else. I had a guy one time tell me that if I slapped my son again because he acted up, that he was going to call the police. And I told him, fine, you let your kids run amok, you let your kids act that way, you want my kid to act that way and run your meal, so be it. But he's not going to run my meal while I'm sitting there paying it for it. I can only imagine how nasty these fights get. I, I mean, realistically, I grew up with my parents spanking me. I slapped him. That was it. It was the end of the way. And he minded. I was able to enjoy it. The rest of the people around us were. Sounds good to me. Uh, Roger on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Roger. Hey, listen, I, I got I got two little girls. Uh, me and my wife own a competition cheerleading gym. We got yeah. cheerleaders at our house all the time. They're jumping on the trampoline. They're making noise. we got a swimming pool. They're in there. My next-door neighbor's a pharmacist. She works nights. And I I feel for her. And I, they aggravate me. So I I try to I try to keep them quiet, but they're not always. She's never said anything. But I just, you know, I, I try to keep my kids, I mean, reasonably quiet. And I have respect for her working nights and all that stuff. 
And I, I don't know. I, you know, what do you what do you do? You got you got your kids are going to be loud and all that stuff, and especially with these cheerleaders doing stuff. Well, if you stuff. live in the burbs, I think that's to be expected. Roger, thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.